I have a 2002 Toyota Corolla. I am the first and the only owner. I can say that I am satisfied with the choice I made 18 years ago. As most of the world's car users appreciate, Corollas are free of hassle on the long run. Except for the car's audio system. The build and sound quality is fine. No complaints, but there are issues with its durability. So on this vlog you will see the issues I faced and fixing them by simply replacing them. I should also say that I installed an external MP3 player using the CD changer port. Now I started to think would this be the cause of my car stereo's early death? I mean early related to Toyota products lifetime. First issue was the tweeters mounted on front doors. This was before I installed the external MP3 player. My car was about 6 years old that time. One day tweeter on the left stopped sounding. In a week time the tweeter on the right stopped sounding too. An original replacement was about 5 times expensive than the aftermarket products. I could pay the high cost if I was convinced that originals would last more than 6 years. So I replaced them with aftermarket tweeters with two prerequisites in mind. First being the same impedance value, and second the durability. So my choice proven itself, those tweeters are now serving since 12 years. The next 10 years were almost problem free. I say almost, because lower part of FM antenna's coating was decomposed, spiral under it is bare open now. The plastic seal where antenna sits on car's body was also cracked. So some kind of water insulation had to be applied on it. Now for the car stereo itself. It is nicely designed and in my opinion had good sound quality. It started with LCD backlight flicker. This was when the car was 16 years old. Flickers turned to no backlight at all in a couple of months. Button illumination has gone later. A complete darkness. So when I was driving at night I was using an external light to read car stereo's LCD. A year later when the car was 17 years old. Loud cracking noise started to come out of loudspeakers. In the beginning there were no functional effect on what I was listening. Cracking noise and music played together. A few months later when inside of the car reached to a certain temperature both cracking noise and sound was gone. According to LCD display, device was functioning, CD or radio was playing. But no sound. Leaving it overnight helped somehow, but didn't take long. Finally when my car is celebrating its 18th birthday, there is no sound from its Matsushita TW58802 car stereo system. So I was forced to replace my car stereo. Android car multimedia systems with GPS navigation had a great appeal on me. Searching for options on the internet, I found out that a tailor-sized Android car stereo for Corolla highly priced compared to standard 7 inches on the market. The ones which can be installed using a third-party frame for your car's model were reasonably priced. But I read that those ones are like theft magnets. Android multimedia systems that can fit any car are very prone to burglary because they can fit to any doubled-in space on the dash using the correct frame. A broken side windows is a terrible experience. So I decided to go for the simplest and cheapest solution. A cheap single DIN MP3 player with FM radio. Here it goes. This is the MP3 player I bought. It has his low FM radio. The price is about 25 US dollars. It comes with an infrared remote controller. I don't think I will ever use it. It is not practical for the driver. In the box we have those metal pieces which unlocks the unit from its housing in case you wish to take it off the housing. But there are no holes on the sides in this unit. They are useless for those modules with detachable front panel. So, yes. Front panel is detachable. I'm just trying to keep my side windows unbroken. SD card slot is under the front panel. USB port is on the right side of the panel. It is protected by a neat cover. Just under USB port we have the auxiliary input, in case you wish to connect your external media player or so. It is supposed to give 50 watts per channel, on 4 channels. 
I doubt about it, I don't believe it is more than 20 watts per channel. Whatever. My concern is clean sound, not power. On the back. There is a 14 pin connector. An ISO conversion connector cable kit is provided. This is the female ISO connector which I had to remove. Because I needed bare cable ends to make the connection. Here you see the Toyota connector kit which I bought separately from the MP3 player and soldered to the player's cables. RCA outputs just in case if I wish to connect it to a power amplifier. Non-applicable for me. Here is the frame I bought together with Toyota cable connector kit you saw earlier. They costed around 15 US dollars. The rectangular metal part in the frame is the housing of the MP3 player. It fits perfectly. The frame is fixed only with two screws, which is enough, because the player is very light. Now we are ready to bring pieces together. Here we go.